Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to business. The first tranche of Cocoa Loan Syndication finally hit the Bank of Ghana's accounts on Wednesday. It is expected that the $600 million released would significantly impact the economy's stability. We have the details in the following report. We understand that $600 million came in today. $500 million is expected to come in November and the remaining $200 million should hit the Bank of Ghana's account in December. This means that by the end of this year, the country would have realized the amount it signed with 24 banks in Paris, France in September by Cocoa Board. So what would this mean for the economy? According to the Bank of Ghana, this would increase its reserves to about $9.4 billion this month and possibly hit $10 billion before December this year. Some analysts have told Joy Business that the development could go a long way to help fast-track the city's recovery as well as its stability. This is because it could convince investors that the Bank of Ghana is in a strong position to step in and support the local currency. They have also told Joy Business it could warn of activities of speculators who the regulator believes had contributed in the past to the city's volatility. The city is now trading at around 5 cities 43 pesos. Now, telecom service operators say they are losing between $300,000 and $400,000 to fiber cuts every month. About $4.4 million was recorded in 2018, and the figure is projected to go higher with the current state of affairs. CEO of the Ghana Chamber of Telecoms, Ken Ashigbe, says road constructions and utility provider infrastructure development are main causes. Nanaya Ojima was at the workshop for stakeholders and has filed this report. About 390 fiber cuts are recorded monthly by the telecommunication industry. Road constructors and utility service providers are mostly corporates with potential network disruption of about 25% nationwide. Mr. Ashibe says besides diplomatic engagement with offenders, telecom companies will explore legal means to address the challenge. But after we've done all the, this education, we know that there are laws in this country. So we are bringing the laws and getting everybody to realize what the laws are. But we've also engaged with the, uh, the Chief Justice, and she's been magnanimous enough to expand the copper court. That was a specialized court that dealt with theft of copper cables to also take on the issues of uh, the fiber cut as well as the vandalization and theft at cell sites. So very soon, after we've done all of this education, if... We still have some recalcitrant people still cutting. And you know, the people, the offenders are those who are in the drainage business, the road business. You know, we have private developers, we have other utilities and all of that. But after all of this engagement, all of this collaboration, if we still have some of them being recalcitrant, then definitely we would have to fall on the, the courts to start criminal prosecution, which it would be the state against them. But we, as well as an industry, will bring several actions, you know, to be able to, you know, get them damages for them from all the damage they have done to our, our facilities. Another challenge confronting the telecom companies is cell site theft. Ashanti region recording the highest rate of 35%. Greater Accra and Eastern regions follow with 25% each. Batteries and fuel are commodities mostly targeted by thieves. In some of the regions, uh, like here as well, the police have asked that we share with them uh, areas where this is very prevalent. And at today's gathering, the police also told us about, we also raised the issue of asking the police to use their road, blo uh, their, the road blocks they mount so that when they see any of these things, they, they confiscate them, they bring them to our attention. We are hoping that we would engage the police directly in their officers' meetings and as well to brief them. And then to also get the community to understand that when these cell sites are attacked and they are taken down, it affects your communication so that the communities can also take ownership about them. At this meeting as well, there's been some information shared about using cameras that will be connected directly to the police operation rooms and all of that. And that's all in business for now. I'll bring you more business at midday. Back to Eniwa. Thank you very much for that. And coming up next is Sports with Benedict Ozu. Thank you.